Hey boys and girls, uh, welcome back to Monroe Live. I'm here with Jordan Arrocha. He's our uh, guy in charge of um, a lot of stuff that has to do with suspension. And um, he's done a study in the past for uh, another customer that uh, compared the X and the S uh, in the olden days. So um, he's got a deep knowledge of what's the difference between what we see here in the new plaid and what was done in the past with the older product. So before I go on for that, I'd just like to again thank our friends over at Sabic. We, uh, we've decided to hang the hood so that, uh, just in case you forget who, uh, who helped us out. So anyway, uh, Jordan, why don't you uh, walk through us a little bit about what you found here on the new plaid versus the older version of the S. Sure, yes, Andy. So there's, um, and we'll talk about it as we go through the rest of the vehicle as well. Some key differences that we saw right off the get were on the cradle, right? So in the last gen, um, it was still an aluminum cradle, but all these, what we would call nodes, right? So it's the corners of the cradle or the subframe. They were all sand cast. So we can tell these are die cast by the types of features that we're seeing, the level of granularity or fidelity that we're getting in those castings. What you're gonna get from that is a higher strength and higher fidelity component in terms of dimensional cr control and so forth. But for the plaid, right, it's better for high volume and it's better for strength, right? This car is uh, designed to take on a fair amount of load given what it is and what it can do. And so we saw those go to die cast. Um, another change in the, one of the back cross members of the cradle. So just on the other side of the steering rack right here, uh, it's cast. And then on the steering rack itself, so that's the, the motor, the rack, this whole thing, this steers the vehicle, right? So you've got an input from uh, I shaft here. This is hard mounted to the cradle. So these bolts go through the uh, steering rack and go into the cradle. The reason that this being hard mounted is sort of significant is because that tells us that they are using the casting of the steering rack as structure to the cradle. So um, when you have a difficult time doing that or you don't want to do that, you would have rubber in between the bolt and the casting. So we would call that isolated. Um, so why is that good? In theory, if they've executed on that well, you're taking material out of the cradle and even potentially taking material out of the rack because they are complementing one another's structures. So that's kind of a cool change. The other thing that um, is, well, and that, that's common on the last one, but what did change from the last Model S to this one is the bolt installation axis. So right now these are top down, or, or for those of you that do CAD, we would say, a Z-axis installation. On the last generation, they put those bolts fore aft or in the X direction. Um, so what does that give you? That gives you some additional packaging space, right? We've got a beefy motor up here. We've got a lot of thermal management, a lot of stuff to deal with from a packaging perspective. So they're getting whatever they can on this module to sink down and sit in this assembly a lot better. Okay, so anyhow, so we done here? On this yeah, side? so uh, the only other point, um, and this is, uh, more of a uh, front wheel or front wheel drive or a rear wheel drive versus all wheel drive function but the uh, lower attachment of the struts or the air suspension um, to the lower control arm here they went to a in this case probably a forged aluminum uh, connection between the lower forged control arm and the strut so it's got a jog in it to get around the half shaft so they can package that not uncommon but it is different relative to the last uh, model s 
Well, actually, the one thing that we're going to see in about a second is uh, something where the half shafts are fed through uh, basically part of the, uh, the body frame. That's something, um, I guess there's only one other car we've seen that on yeah. the uh, 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 Range Rover, I guess. Yep. So, uh, so there's a lot of unique things that are happening here that we've, mm, well, we may have seen it before, but, we, but it's very uncommon. Yeah. So why don't we pop back here and have a look at the decking that was done here for the, um, for the, for the motor and whatnot. Yeah, so Sandy, as you were mentioning, here's those, those pockets coming through the rail of the vehicle, yeah. and that rail transitions into the torque box area. But as we're looking at this, um, one of the enablers to doing this is changing this to a casting. This area yeah. on the, uh, the original Model S was all a, a stamped rail section. Um, and then, in fact, forward of this, this the primary rail at the front was two hexagonal sections. So they've gone to a single section, and then that gloves inside of two separate, quite large castings that glove over that rail and make that attachment. So what this pocket allows them to do is maintain a structural section below the axis of the half shaft. Hmm. So if you were to look at, um, if you consider this whole rail a moment arm, which it is, the taller that this section is from the lowest point, as long as there's a structural section there, to the highest point, the stiffer and the stronger this, this entire uh, front end of the vehicle is going to be. So it, it does do some interesting things to your assembly process but structurally, that's not a bad way to go. That's a great way to go. If you're looking at structure, this is um, about as good as it can possibly be. I'm, I'm really impressed with these, the, the number of castings that we're seeing now uh, out of Tesla. Uh, they're leaving everybody else in the dust when it comes to the amount of cast materials that there are inside, of, uh, inside these vehicles. And ultimately, all it does is help you because you're getting rid of so many extra bits and pieces that you don't need. Right. The one thing that I am kind of mm, interested or, or it's kind of like so different and I've never seen anybody really doing it because I didn't work on the Range Rover, but putting the half shafts together, uh, together into the, uh, into the, uh, into the uh, motor and, uh, and gearbox, I'm really, uh, <laughs> I really don't know. That that seems like kind of a a tough job. Yeah, it's not uh, it's not great to feed it through. There's kind of some blind operations that have to happen to a certain extent. But um, you know, there's for sure there's some pros and cons with assembly. Which, mm. from an assembly perspective, this vehicle does some interesting things at at the module level. Yeah. So if you look at the whole underside of this vehicle, there's like four primary modules or sub-assemblies that we would call from what we can tell. And those four are the suspension and cradle, so that's your control arms, your brakes, your cradle, steering rack. That's gonna be one module. The other module is your gearbox and your motor. Then your front end cooling module. And then lastly, up at the top, which you can't see from down here too well, the super beam module. So it's got the cross member and all the things that are mounted to it. But what's, I think what's more interesting is the sequence. So based on the buildup and how the, the uh, motor mount bracket gloves inside of the casting up here, let me see if I can get my phone light on, um, that casting's actually stopping the motor from being dropped in from the top. And because of the access to some of the bolts, it also tells us that the motor's gotta go in first. So the, the motor and the gearbox need to go in um, first, and then after that, you could either, uh, I would assume since the vehicle will likely be in the air at that point in time, you'd probably bring your cooling module in. Um, and, and then you would either make your suspension attachments or what we think is more likely, um, the octo valve module uh, may need to go in because once again, it comes down to bolt access. You can have the best design in the world, but if you can't build it, it's kind of worthless. Yeah. I'm thinking that there may have to even be, instead of a module, it may have to be broken down even more. We'll find that out when we start taking it apart. 
but um, this is a really tight build um, and that's good from a space uh, utilization standpoint a little tougher for the guys uh, to put together on the floor but again this is a lower volume product normally <laughs> quite frankly normally you'd see all the stuff going up inside to the car all in one big giant module that'd be built offline so having four modules in here is a lot different but what they're trying to do is more than just uh, st you know uh, basically stuff it into the into the bay what they're also looking at is what can we do that'll help us uh, reduce the amount of space that's wasted uh, during space claim uh, during the design of the product so for me this is kind of like a really good idea one of the things that we might want to also uh, suggest or show off is um, this is what's coming from your steering wheel um, and um, I was kind of hoping <laughs> that um, there'd be two wires coming down I'm really really hoping that sooner or later we can get rid of these uh, universal joints and whatnot uh, that come from the steering wheel down to the uh, rack and um, and all we'll have is a couple of wires going to the electric motor. Um, certainly that would make things a little bit easier and the car would be a little bit lighter and I think the cost is going to go down as well. Sure. But for right now we're stuck with um, uh, we're stuck with a initi initiative that says we have to have something mechanical even though there's no there's no aircraft on the planet that has anything mechanical uh, going to any of the flight control systems that are on an airplane. It's funny, uh, airplanes okay, but a car isn't. Strange. Yeah. So anyway, um, I think we're done with this uh, this section then, and uh, stay tuned because we're going to be talking about the rear uh, assembly here shortly. Thanks for watching Monroe Live and. Uh, Stay tuned. There's more to come on the Tesla Model S Plaid.